Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about DNA replication. What is DNA replication exactly? So we can say it is defined as a process in which a DNA makes a copy of itself. DNA has the potential to make a copy of itself, therefore it is called as autocatalysis. So from DNA to DNA is autocatalysis and from DNA to RNA is heterocatalysis. Crick proposed three types of DNA replication. It means there can be any one possibility out of three. One is conservative method, second is dispersive method and third is semi-conservative method. When we talk about conservative method, basically it means conserved, where the parental DNA will remain same, it will remain conserved. And in dispersive method, the parental and the new DNA will mix with each other. And semi-conservative means what? The half. So let's understand, in conservative method, this is the parental DNA which remains preserved as it is and new daughter DNA is formed. When we talk about dispersive method, in this method, the parental DNA and the daughter DNA, they both get mixed with each other. Means in reality, we get a total new type of DNA where with different features but when I talk about semi-conservative method then we can say that one of the strand remains the parental strand and other one is the newly synthesized daughter strand so one that is means 50 percent of the DNA is parental and later on when studies was made it was observed that the DNA replication is only of semi-conservative type. Dispersive method and conservative method is not there. How we know? Let's try and understand the types of DNA replication with respect to cell basically. There are two types of cell. One is eukaryotic cell and the one is prokaryotic cell. When I talk about prokaryotic cell, the DNA is circular. When I talk about eukaryotic cell, the DNA is linear. Circular DNA replicates by theta model and linear DNA replicates by Y-shaped replicating fork model. This is the DNA when it opens up and a new DNA is getting formed then it appears like a theta so we say it's a theta model. In Y-shaped replicating fork it develops a different kind of form so this is a Y-shaped replicating fork of DNA. Now who exactly came up with the experiment saying that it is a semi-conservative model so you can say semi-conservative method was proved by Messelson and Stahl in 1953. So Messelson and Stahl basically they came up with new ideas. They proved DNA replication of semi-conservative type by use of heavy isotope of nitrogen. We all know that the normal isotope of nitrogen which naturally exists is N14. They used N15 as the heavy isotope. It means they started, they used the centrifugation method and chemicals like cesium chloride for the experiment. Let us take this DNA to be of N15 and 15, but when it replicates, we will get a different bands after centrifugation where it will show that one of the strand is N15 and other strand is N14. It means 50% of the parental information remains conserved in the new one. So 50% is parental DNA strand and another 50% is new DNA strand or we can say total DNA strand. Therefore it is called as a semi-conservative method. Half of the information of parent is always stored. Uh, with respect to a NEAT exam you can understand one thing at every generation the percentage of the parental DNA becomes half. For example if it is 100% in the starting so in the next it will be 50 it will be 25, then 12.5, then 6.25 and so on. So like this we always have some part of our parental gene. Most important key points, DNA replication takes place in the nucleus of the cell. It takes place in the S phase or the synthetic phase of cell division. Now let's start with respect to steps of DNA replication. One by one 
I have made separate diagrams for each step so that you can understand easily. And here we are using eukaryotic cell. What is step one? First, we need to activate all the nucleotides. So first step becomes activation of all the nucleotides that is called as DNTPs. Now there are different inactive forms of the nucleotides. It is like deoxyaldehyde monophosphate, deoxyguanine monophosphate, deoxycytosine monophosphates. Now we require ATP and one enzyme phosphorylase, which will add phosphate group to the inactive form and convert them into active nucleotides like deoxyaldehyde triphosphate, deoxyguanosine triphosphate. What is step two? We need to find out. origin of replication when you talk about origin of replication with respect to cell it will be totally different if it's a prokaryotic cell the dna is very small so we can say they have only one origin of replication but if it's a eukaryotic cell they have linear dna or large dna and they have many origin of replication so we need to understand searching origin of replication is the most important task to be done so it is step number to find out the origin of replication step 3 says after getting the origin just give a cut a nick or incision in the dna now when you do that it is done by the help of the enzyme endonuclease endo means in nucleic means nucleic acid ase means cutting so it cuts the dna somewhere inside so we can say that is step number 3 by the help of enzyme endonuclease cut the dna at the origin of replication but still the dna will be attached to each other by the help of bond that is called as phosphodiester the hydrogen bonds now in step number 4 what we are going to do that is called as unwinding or unzipping of dna it is done by the help of one of the most important enzyme dna helicase DNA helicase is also called as rep protein. What is the role of the DNA helicase? Is to break all the hydrogen bonds. But when we talk about hydrogen bonds, we need to understand one very important thing, friends. A is joined to T by two hydrogen bond and C to G by three hydrogen bond. So A and T will require less energy and C and G will require more energy, and that energy is provided by ATP. So once the DNA hydrogen bond is broken down by the help of DNA helicase or rep protein. the dna strands unwinds now this unwinded strand they might intercoil among each other after unwinding so that becomes a step number 5 is to prevent the intercoiling or you can say coiling of the dna among itself so we use of ssbp single stranded binding protein to prevent intercoiling of dna so what we need to understand here this dna should be in the form of y shaped replicating fork so we make use of ssbp so single stranded binding protein so let's take at the look look at this diagram now here it says that the both the unwinded strands they have intercoiled among each other so when we use ssbp it makes the dna strand straight so that it appears like a y shaped replicating fork now one of the most important thing if you have seen two threads twisted among each other and if you pull the thread from the center center it opens up and forms a bubble but upper end of the thread undergoes a tension so dna also undergoes a tension so step number 6 becomes what release of tension caused due to unwinding of the dna due to unwinding the upper part of the dna suffers a tension and if the tension continues the dna might break so here we make use of one of the special enzyme called as topo isomerase Now this topo isomerase, what it does, it releases all the tension of the DNA. Let us take this to be a tension, highly coiled. And when we put the enzyme topo isomerase, what happens? It unwinds. See, it releases the tension. As you can see in the diagram, the tension is released. And one of the most important thing you need to understand that topo isomerase is also called as DNA gyrase. So just remember this. After this, we have step number. 7 now what is step 7 basically it's a formation of rna primer when we use the word primer primer means small fragments rna primer means small fragment of rna it is synthesized by the help of the enzyme dna primase what is the role of the rna primer the only problem with rna primer is that it always binds only and only 
at three prime end of the DNA. So on one strand or one template of the DNA, it is three prime end is easily available. So RNA primer knows where to bind. So we can say let's five prime, three prime. So on the three prime, what happens? The DNA, the RNA primer binds basically. So here is the RNA primer which is binded to three prime end. But on the other template, it is not possible. So RNA primer can bind at many places. Now we are going for step number eight, that is synthesis of new DNA strand. For synthesis of new DNA strand, very important factor that comes into picture is DNA polymerase. Now the DNA polymerase are of three type, type one, type two, and type three. So here type three is used for synthesis of new DNA strand. But the only problem of DNA polymerase is it can add nucleotide only in 5 prime to 3 prime direction of the strand. So again it has a condition for continuity or continuous addition. Now when we talk about DNA polymerase, it attracts all the activated nucleotides that we have activated in step 1. Now with respect to template, the nucleotides will be joined and new strands of the DNA will be formed. So let's understand overall DNA replication. So this is the DNA which has unwinded. 3 prime and a 5 prime. Most important enzyme which breaks all the hydrogen bond if you remember it is DNA helicase also called as rep protein. Tension of the DNA is released by the help of enzyme topo isomerase which is also called as DNA gyrase. These are all SSBP single stranded binding protein which holds the DNA straight and prevents the intercoiling of the unwinded DNA. Most important part what we need to understand here now is the RNA primer which always binds to the 3 prime end of the template. So this is 3 prime end. So the other end becomes 5 prime end. So this is RNA primer. And on the other strand, RNA primer can bind at multiple places because it is not getting a 3 prime end. Now this is the most important enzyme DNA polymerase 3. Now this DNA polymerase 3 will catalyze the addition of the nucleotides. Now here there are many DNA polymerase. Every time it comes and goes, so DNA polymerase 3 on one template on one strand there is a continuous synthesis of DNA but on other it is not continuous because on one strand only 5 prime to 3 prime direction is available which is called as leading strand or it is also called as continuous strand. But on other it is not continuous available so it is called as lagging strand or discontinuous strand. Now in this the DNA is synthesized in the form of broken fragments called as Okazaki fragments. So these Okazaki fragments basically are broken fragments. What we can understand here, this is the lag lagging strand, this one is the leading strand in fact, which is a continuous strand and the DNA is synthesized at a faster rate. But on other area, you can see that the DNA is synthesized in form of broken fragments. These fragments are Okazaki, one of the Japanese scientists. This lagging strand or the broken fragments, they are joined to each other by the help of special enzyme called as DNA ligase and this DNA ligase sticks all the Okazaki fragments and makes the DNA proper one and at the end the RNA primer is removed. So it's a semi-conservative method of DNA replication where 50% is the parental DNA and 50% is the newly synthesized strand. Hope you have understood the concept of DNA replication friends. Do share, do like, do subscribe. Your subscribing motivates me to make more such easy videos for you. Till then, this is Sunil sir saying goodbye. Thank you very much.